Hi everybody, welcome back. Part 9 of the Saturn V build. And in this video, what I'm hoping to do is um, get this painted and then start working on the main parts of the um, of the actual rocket itself. Um, I've just been playing around with the lunar module. I've put a magnet in there now, so that's going to have to be painted again. Um, and as you'll know from the last video, we've got the command service module and command module done. I need to spray the uh, exhaust nozzle on that one, but that's all um, clear coated now. So yeah, all ready to go on top of the on top of the main body. It's going to look nice, I think, when it's all done. Um, <clears throat> and if you haven't seen previous sections, um, please no comments on accuracy or anything. This has basically become an out of the box build which will be um, used as a display in the living room and show people how it worked and everything. Um, you know, the, 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 it's got too many bits and pieces on the body and the shapes wrong in certain areas and the command service modules incorrect. And, you know, there's little bits and pieces missing. There's a lot of detail that could be added to this kit to perfect it. And also a lot of um, research needs to be done to make sure you get bits and pieces correct. So this is just gonna be a, kind of displaced piece to, to show people really you know how it all worked and how it came apart and say so this is the bit that came back you know um, so what, what I've done here this uh, Vallejo paint hasn't dried um, fully so what I've done I've put some Vallejo liquid mask over it so if that pulls the paint off then Vallejo liquid mask doesn't work with Vallejo paint which would be good wouldn't it um, I'm sure it'll be fine so what I've done is just painted it on um, and gone round pretty roughly and in areas where you sort of want to um, you know not have the mask you can just with a toothpick just sort of push it over you, you can see there I'm just if you can catch it in the light just pushing it over so that it so that it's not on the um, on the, the silver bits anymore which which I'm going to be painting white underneath those silver bits are black um so yeah that's that's basically that and it does put some scratches in the silver paint because being Vallejo it's not very strong um it's not one of their best features is the actual durability of Vallejo paint it's not uh, very durable at all it's probably of all the manufacturers it's probably the worst um for durability on plastic so there we go. So I'm just going to carry on going around and just pushing this mask over. If you try and cut it and peel it, it tends to, um, when you cut it, it all just tends to lift off. So um, I could have applied it a bit more carefully than this, to be honest. But uh, I'm not really overly fussed because if I need to, I can just go over it with a wash and, and blend it all in afterwards anyway. So um, let me just get this done and then we'll get it painted. Right, so that's painted white now. What I've done there, uh, Tamiya XF1, direct into the airbrush. Um, no thinning, no nothing, just straight in the airbrush. I've seen Phil Florida do that quite a lot. It's not going to give you the best finish, but it does give you very, very quick coverage and less faff. Um, and really on this area, I want no faff because basically I think it's going to be a bit of a mess. I think we're going to have all sorts of problems here. If you notice as well, I've got the um, another new cutting mat, which I bought with my own money this time. And uh, on that subject, guys, I'm I'm considering it, this is something I said I wouldn't do, but I'm considering starting a Patreon uh, account. Now I know a lot of YouTubers do it, and people just make an odd donation or whatever to the um, channel. Now what? What I don't think I want to go through the hassle of is having, you know, people put videos up that are Patreon only, you know, so if you want to see this, you have to pay money into Patreon and then, you know, other people can see it three weeks later or something. I don't think I'm going to go into the hassle of that, but I'm just wondering if I maybe had a Patreon account, if people out of the goodness of their heart would just donate the odd pound or two or dollar or two. And maybe we could build up enough that I could 
basically afford to buy a camera because as some of you will know I don't work I have no income whatsoever I don't claim any benefits or anything like that so having the channel kind of pay for itself would be a kind of nice thing for me um, and it's kind of going to improve the viewing for you as well um, you know I mean I can still do more work for, with lighting um, I need to uh, I definitely need to get another camera at the moment I'm using my iPhone 6s plus which is you know which is not ideal um, I'd like to get a more professional camera and I just thought that maybe if a few people donated a few quid or a couple of quid then it might build up and I might get enough to do that you know along with the money from the advertising as well so let me know what you think um, I, I don't really like the idea of it to me it's almost like begging if you like I just don't like the idea of it and as you can see this is a mess <laughs> this is just a rubbish I mean the, the the mask doesn't want to peel off for a start it's um yeah it's pretty darn awful to be honest guys let's try a cocktail stick all I'm doing is scratching all the silver paint off so that was a waste of time thanks once again Viejo for a brilliant modeling experience absolutely awesome that paint's been on there well I think I gave you a timeline in part 8 of the video. Well, you haven't seen part 8 yet as I'm filming this part 8 is actually uploading now um, but when I, I, I painted this last Wednesday and it is now Monday so this paint has been on here for five days look at it you could just scratch it off with a toothpick total and utter waste of time I'm gonna have to strip this and start again I think um, it's just a, a total and utter waste of time peel it off there on the top but is it going to pull the sides off no um, yeah what a mess absolute total mess so there we go I'm going to strip that and start again I think brilliant right it's been about 48 hours since the last little segment here so a couple of seconds for you two days for me uh, if you remember this panel here was painted with the Mr. Hobby GX2 um, and then it was um, painted over with the Viejo metal colour well it was actually the steel I used wasn't it the Model Air steel this is Model Air aluminium and it didn't dry a subscriber um, I'm not going to even try and pronounce his name um, let's just say I think he's Dutch I hope I'm not insulting him but I think he's Dutch his, his name looks like he's probably from the Netherlands um, he said that he tried um, putting Vallejo straight onto plastic and it dried straight away he put it on top of um, or mixed it or put it on mixed it with Mr. Hobby leveling thinners and it didn't dry so he wonders if there's some incompatibility between the Mr. Hobby and the Vallejo now interestingly I stripped this with Dettol so it had about um, 24 hours in the Dettol then it's scrubbed up with a brush um, and then a quick wipe over with some thinners I've painted it um, last night with Tamiya XF2 neat not thin um, and then quickly went over it with some um, Mr. Leveling thinners just to level it out um, that's a technique I'll show you in another video and then uh, I'm painting this on now and it is drying so I'm applying it by brush <clears throat> and it's it's drying so it seems as though there may be some incompatibility with Vallejo paint and with the um, Mr. Hobby so I will do a, a short video um, on, on basically on that and see what's actually going on because if you can't use the GX2 under Vallejo then as I've shown in the last part of this Saturn build you're better off sticking with your L-clads um, I mean the Alclad chrome is far nicer than the Viejo chrome anyway 
So uh, it'd be interesting to um, to see what actually happens. Now, <clears throat> I know I've tried my um, Viejo Metal Color Aluminium on bare plastic, prime plastic, everything, and it doesn't dry whatever I do. But we'll do that trial again, just in case I did something wrong. Um, but it would appear that this one, the ordinary model air, metallic, um, doesn't like the Mr. Hobby base coat. So we, I guess we could also try it with some Tammy, I suppose. Um, I believe Viejo do their own one pack um, base coat, black, which I'm sure would be absolutely fine. But the one thing I will say, and this is untested, untried, so it's just a, an opinion I'm forming, but um, I have always found Viejo paint to be the less resilient of the uh, of all the manufacturers, if you like. So I've always found Viejo to be the one that scratches off easiest, the one that doesn't want to stick to bare plastic, um, the one that will fish eye if there's the slightest bit of grease, whatever. Uh, and, and it's the same for um, Ammo by MIG, those paints, they, um, they're, they're, I'm not going to say they're awful because that's not fair, but uh, let's just say you won't see me ever using them again. Um, so yeah, it's, um, I mean this stuff, the reason I bought this is exactly for this, it's for brush painting, it's as a metallic paint. It is wonderful for brush painting. It's particularly good. It was Paul at ISM that got me onto this. And uh, it's particularly good for like if you're doing, um, you know, if you're just painting in some track one ends on a model car or something, or or you're just painting in some detail on an engine. Um, it's it's perfect because it's uh, it's got quite a small pigment in it. If you look at things like the uh, Tamiya XF16, or the X11, is it the silver? Um, the pigment is massive. It's almost like a metal flake paint. And uh, it's it's not very nice to use. I mean, this isn't, the, the finish isn't perfect. Um, it tends to, as you can see, it's kind of tearing up what's underneath it. But in this area, I'm not really too worried about the finish and everything. I'll give this a gloss coat and then I'll give it a heavy wash. And um, <clears throat> and that'll improve the look of it, I think. But uh, oh, there we go. That's that done, and it is drying. So I don't know. <clears throat> I'm saying it's Viejo. Maybe it's actually what I'm using underneath it. So uh, I'll do a video. I'll do a test, and we'll see where we go from there. Right. <clears throat> Let's move on a bit now. Um, if you get this magazine, this was the issue one of the Airfix Model World magazine. Uh, and as you can see, it's December 2010, so it's quite old. And I can remember buying this, and I can't believe it was that long ago. Um, but in here, there's a great feature um, by do, 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 Matt Irvin. And here he's basically done a, a build feature on the Airfix um, 144 scale Saturn V. And he's talked about the errors and the issues with the kit and everything. Now, he's included a lot of photographs in here, and it would appear that a lot of the photographs he's included of the real thing are of the uh, early Apollo missions. Um, so I'm going to basically go with the colours that I can see in these images. And as we can see in here, these are the images we've got. We've got this sort of between stage um, two and one. Well, the interstage, this part, the interior is like this grey green colour. Okay, so that's like a almost like an interior green colour, as is the back end of stage two. So those can be like a grey green colour. The top end of stage two um, is uh, like a zinc chromate colour. So I'm going to use this yellow green. Um, let me actually just have a look what colour would be suitable for. I'm thinking maybe this sky with a wash would be suitable for that. So I think I'll use that for the interstage in this. Um, the top of stage one, so they're going to be grey and the top's going to be green. The top of stage one, you can see here, 
is all that um, yellow green color which is zinc chromate so I'm going to use that in there the bottom end of stage one this inside here is um, is like a, a zinc chromate color as well so I'm going to spray that inside there you can see that here maybe I'll put a little green in it because it does look a bit greener in those photos um, so I'll put that in there and then that white engine plate that I've painted can go inside and then that'll fit in there lovely with that um, and as for stage three we can see here's stage three the this is like a, a, a chrome silver effect you can see there and all around here is zinc chromate and the back end is zinc chromate as well so this kit is all very very inaccurate so I may just do that all zinc chromate or, or I may just mask it up and spray some silver on top um, but I'm certainly not going to go to a town and get that try and get that glossy effect on there um, the inside of this one I'm assuming will be the same color as the top of stage two so I'll spray that this in chromate as well so um, let me get this painting done and I'll come back to you right so we're all painted up now so <clears throat> this is um, XF4 Tamiya um, yellow green I think they call it a quick look yeah yeah XF4 yellow green um, so that's what that's been done with the back end here is a mixture of XF71 and that uh, XF4 yellow green. XF71 is their um, Japanese cockpit green. Um, this lot here, this is all done in the, the same, the XF4. Um, this is a mixture again in here. Back end here is a mixture and up here is the XF4, which is basically zinc chromate. Um, and there again there, there again there. And then in there that's also zinc chromate but you're not really going to see much of that anyway um, and as you can probably see my attention has kind of moved away from you know perfection and getting everything gorgeous it, it to just having it all basically colored and that because as I, as I've said in the in the previous video as well that this is going to become kind of a toy almost you know but I'm not going to mess up and sort of just throw paint at it it's not um, it's not that I'm giving up but um no it's uh it's less of an accurate model now than 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 it was I was originally thinking I mean it's it's there's a lot of incorrect stuff about it I mean I was going to seal all this up and not have it opening but I'm going to have it opening it's going to be like a display piece that like the sort of thing you might see that a school might want so um and you can also see here that if the, if the camera is going to pick it up but um, if I rub my finger over here when I talk about leaving models and letting them s s just settle for the seams to settle you can see that seam has come back there if I now give that a very gentle polish with this polishing stick you'll probably see there we go you can see that that seam has come back so if I'd gone on and done all the white paint and everything that would be back so I'm gonna to have to now put some more Mr. Surfacer on there it's not so bad down the bottom it hasn't come back down there um, so I'm gonna now have to go over and put some Mr. Surfacer in there otherwise that's gonna show up in the white paint um, this one yeah there's a bit there that's reappeared there you can see some the rest of it is absolutely fine so yeah I'm gonna have to do a little bit of remedial work on here and then um, leave it again for another day or so and uh, I'll see what happens something I forgot to say guys when I was doing this uh, all of this is painted and then been overcoated with Johnson's clear which is now called future I think um, a lot of people use this as like a varnish um, I don't I'll use it as this is basically just to seal the matte painting before I give it a wash just to highlight the details um, I tend to not use it very much at all really I mean this bottle here is probably you can see on this is 1997 I think it's probably about that old so um, you can see it's yellowed slightly but I keep it in the dark so it's, uh, it's, it does last longer um, but it's okay if you want to put something down quickly to, to put your decals on um, or as I say just seal in a matte paint to, to give it a wash then it's fine for that uh, it's also okay for dipping your clear parts in if you look at my Humber uh, Monty's Humber build you'll see I did the screen in this 
Um, but as far as a finished varnish goes, I, I don't like to use it. Um, I just don't like the stuff. Some people absolutely swear by it, but you know, each to their own. I'd much rather use Aqua Gloss. So um, there we go. Now I'm going to have to leave all this now to go off before I can put a wash on it. And obviously I'm going to have to sort of do some more work on these seams and then we'll go from there. Right. So what I've done, rather than putting any Mr. Surfacer on, I've polished this back. And as you can see, the seam lines have, um, have disappeared. That there is, I don't know, I think that's because of this um, aerosol black primer. But the more, I, the, there's more, I just keep polishing, it doesn't disappear. So, but there's nothing there. I think it's just the difference in the two plastics. Um, or maybe there's Mr. Surfacer on one side and not on the other. I don't know. But um, yeah, there's certainly nothing there. Now, you know, sometimes you find things you never knew you had. Mr. Base White 1000. So this is basically Mr. Servicer, but in white. So I know this stuff makes an, Mr. Servicer makes an awesome primer. So I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to go around these areas that don't have the ribbing, like on here and on here and on here, and just put a base of white on and then leave that for a day or so because then when I rub that back that will really show me and also it has a filling capability as well and I think then what I'm going to do is mark out the um, the black bits paint them first and then mask up and do the white so um, the overall I'm pretty pleased with this uh, to give you an idea of time frame today is Wednesday the 15th of May and as you know this is part 9 I believe and I'm currently working on part three of the of the shuttle. So um give you an idea of the size of this thing, look. It's incredible, isn't it, how big the shuttle is. Um so yeah, I'm working on that at the moment. So um and thank you very much to the guy that sent me a uh, message to tell me that I can get the American Airlines decals for that. So yeah, really chuffed about that. I'm gonna get those. Um so yeah, basically going for oh the other thing I've done. Um, I painted the fins and I've done these just to show you I've done these with that old um, Humbrol metal coat um, which thinking about it I think this paint could well be 30 years old even 35 years old it could even be 40 years old you know um, but it just shows you that the Humbrol paints in their little tin that's they just last forever they're, they're great um, really really good Having said that, I've just had an email from um, one of my followers and he's in the Netherlands and he contacted Humbrol and said, I'm looking at building a Spitfire and I want to make sure the colours are accurate for the RAF. Can you recommend me the colours in your range I should use? And their response to him was, have a look at our website and you'll see lots of Spitfires on there. I mean, what? Come on. I couldn't believe it. Anyway, I digress. So I'm going to get some of this on here and then I'll come back and show you what it looks like. Right, that's gone quite well. Sorry about the uh, extractor in the background, but I don't want to turn it off because uh, this is quite smelly. This has been painted now for, I don't know, about five minutes. And um, as you can see, it's gone down nice. There's a few spatters in it, like, where are we talking? Here you can see. Um, that's the risk of having a combination of too thick a paint or using your airbrush a lot and you sometimes get a build up on the tip and then when you next use it you'll get the spatter so the best advice is try and get in the habit when you're airbrushing if this is my airbrush if you're going like this when you stop come away start again and then come so don't ever start again you see it there the spatter there um, don't ever start again over the model come away and then carry on come away and carry on and then we because you'd only ever get that spatter normally initially when you first press the trigger um, but obviously this is just a sort of base primer and I'm not too fussed about it but um you can see it does go on very very nice I've never used it before um, god knows how long I've had it but the price on the bottle is £3.30 so it must be quite old oh that's coming remember I didn't glue that very well because I thought some aftermarket might come along so I'll have to put some glue on that um, but yeah I'm really pleased with that and I mean you, you can see where the seam is because of the work I've done here but other than that you know is that seam there or is it there really chuffed with that so they've come out really nice and of course white is the best color to hide seams same on here on the third stage um, in fact on this one yeah the seams there 
so there the same yeah you can I can pick it out because of the work I've done here but other than that I can't really see it so pretty chuffed with it all and uh, so yeah all very very nice these are all fared and as you can see and smoothed out so we haven't got that step in them uh, which is uh, how it should be in real life um, what I did notice on this one there's a step uh, that you can actually sand out I may do I don't know um, but it shouldn't be there's a step there as well on that one uh, these are obviously separate glued on yeah there's a step there so I think I probably will sand those out because I don't like the look of that so um there we go guys uh, some more sanding to do and um, and then I'll be back right um, I painted that dome in there now with the Viejo aluminium um, sorry the chrome and um, yeah it hasn't quite dried but it's only been on there for about an hour or so I'll give it a benefit of the doubt but that was over um, future so maybe it doesn't dry over future either so um, I've looked at this now and what I need to do is glue this onto here and then deal with the seam so I'm just going to test fit that on there now and that goes on yeah it's not brilliant but um it'll do so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this Revell contactor liquid because it's thicker than your extra thins and everything and um, I can just get some in there I know that it'll be right into the corner then so we just put some in like that let that run round the other beauty of this stuff is it stays um, it stays uh, wet for longer so there we go and then I can just slot this on like so give it a push and we'll get a bit of glue oozing out, that's fine. I'm not going to touch it, I'm just going to leave it. And I should have done this really before I painted it. Because I'm going to have to do all the paint again and uh, some more preparation. But that seam needs to be sorted, I think, up to that line is black anyway. So, um, so bit by bit we're ending up with less and less parts to this and it's all going to soon become one. Which is pretty cool. Just keep pushing that, you can see the glue oozing out. So I can leave that to go off and then put some Mr. Service around her. In fact, I'll probably use the white and then um, sand it all back. So there we go. That's that done. These um, engines, what I want to do is show you bit by bit what I'm doing. If you remember, I painted them with the, um, the gloss black, the GX3. Then they had a coat of the um, Alclad engine exhaust. And now they've had a very, very thin coat, almost like a wash sprayed through the airbrush of the um, iron of the uh, Tamiya iron color XF84 so they'll look quite good under a, under a matte coat and what I need to do now is somehow mask all this off and paint this area here lighter in color so um, I'll probably use masking fluid on the top and tape on the bottom but I'll show you when I do that um, I just want to keep you up to date what I'm doing so if you want your engines to look the same and you can do the same as me oh, and I forgot to say for painting that inside there that that drum all I did I'll show you on this piece because I've glued that together now got a piece of paper mold it into a tube shoved it inside push it out and then you've only got the dome exposed and you can just spray in there then and rip the paper out and it saves you um, getting all your nice uh, zinc chromate color covered in the uh, in the, the shiny silver paint so that's how that's going to look when it's all together and there we go so that's going to get a wash I need to touch up here where it's had some white go into it so that'll get a wash and everything and it'll all look, um, all look hunky dory I also need to now get in there and paint the edge of that I think that doesn't look too good although it'll be probably covered with a wash but um, yeah the lunar module is going to sit in there so I'm guessing with its legs down it's going to slot in like that yeah so that's just going to sit in there like that obviously the, the top part's missing the ascend stage this is the descend stage or the ascent stage and the descent stage so uh, yeah i'm learning guys i think that's going to close with that in there isn't it yeah so there we are keep watching 
Right, as I said in the uh, in the last video, it's all getting a bit sort of bitty and not very interesting for you guys, I'm sorry, but um, I've painted the engines, as you know, I did the iron on them. I then masked them up and did the silver. I used the um, Viejo aluminium. Um, and it's not perfect, but it doesn't matter because I'm going to get a wash and the wash will go into all the corners and sort of blend everything in. They then had a clear coat, a clear coat of um, aqua gloss just to sort of um, settle them down. And then when I wash them, they'll, the wash will just go into all the corners and then they'll get a bit of a dry brushing as well. So they're not perfect, but I think they're going to look um, absolutely fine when they're sat, you know, sat in the bottom of there looking out. I think they're going to look absolutely fine. So um, worth remember as well, guys, that iron is um put a clear coat on it, it really the metallic in it really pops as you can see so uh yeah really nice so um that's those all done i've rubbed this down now put some more mr some gray mr surface in it so i see what i'm doing what i found was when i go through to the white plastic and i've got white mr surface i can't see if i've got a gap there or not so i've got the gray and then if i see the gray untouched then uh, i know that i'm um I need to put some more in there and also it's very important when you're sanding that to make sure you keep the sanding sponge square like that and square like that so you retain that sort of corner if you like it's not blended in it's not a radius it needs to be like a corner but I think there's a painted black line around there anyway so um that'll sort of make it like a corner anyway so there we go that's that bit done um once all this has had a wash then I can glue all this together and then that'll be that done um, and then once this is all washed, this can go on there and that'll look cool as well. So yeah, we'll, we'll come in together and uh, get in there. Okay then guys, um, let's just do, do a little bit and finish up this uh, this part nine because um, it's just going on and on with lots of little bits and pieces otherwise. So what I'm going to do now is give everything a wash. So this is actually, this is an old Tamiya paint pot and it's basically a mix of a something called Starship Filth. It comes in this set here and it's available um, pretty much everywhere. Uh, Absalom 502 and it's a set of different colours. You can see there the colours you get. Ghost Grey, um, Dead Flesh, Turquoise Light, Starship Filth, Coagulated Blood and Gundam Blue. And it's basically for doing um, sci-fi stuff. But the, the only one I've ever actually used in there I think is the um, is the Starship Filth, which is, as you can see, it's like a very, very dark grey. And this is mixed up with odourless thinners. And I'm going to put a little drop more odourless thinners in there, I think, because um, I think that's a little bit heavy. It's better to have washes a little bit on the light side than on the heavy side. Um, you can always go back and take them off. That is the beauty of using oil washes. If you if you use oil washes and you don't like them, you can just get a cotton bud, you know, up to sort of 24 hours really, and just go in there and and kind of go in with the damp cotton bud with um, odorless thinners. And uh, this is what I'm using here. Okay, so now you can see that one. And yes, my hands are filthy. Um, doing lots of sanding and stuff and working outside and all sorts. So I'm just gonna try it on this little one first. And you can see I just brush this on and it runs into all the corners and gives it a, a great look. Yeah. I'll do the same on here just to show you. Just brush it on. I'm not absolutely soaking it. It's just, it's just a, a pretty heavy application. You don't really want it to puddle anywhere. And then um, if you're watching my build along, you'll see that in that one, to try and sort of work along with people and not have to spend loads of money on oils and everything I've used an acrylic wash and um, you'll see that it's not very user-friendly it certainly is not as user-friendly as this one is so there we go it's, you can see it goes in and picks up all the edges and highlights everything all right I'll show you on this engine plate and if you remember with this I am um, here yeah, we can make the uh, Ravel ink come to life that'd be cool and uh, yeah, if you remember, I've, everything on here has been covered with a, a layer of um, future floor polish um, to seal it in. Otherwise, if you if you don't, if you put this onto matte paint, you will get a very um, 
quite a big shock it just goes in and soaks in and then you it's very difficult to get off and it's the same with like the flory washes and stuff you know the clay based washes um, you know you can see what I did there out to the bottom of the pot and um, yeah you, you if you if you don't put a gloss coat on then you will find it very difficult to get it off afterwards like if you've just done a beautiful navy phantom f4 and you want it you know to to just tie out all the panel lines and everything you're using say a floor wash give it a gloss coat first then when you're ready when it's when the wash is dry you could just go over with a, a wet sort of damp towel or a t-shirt or paper towel or whatever wipe it off and all you'll get is the the wash remaining in the panel lines whereas if you don't put the matte coat on you will end up with them um, I'm just going to put it a little bit heavier in there you will end up with a, uh, a sort of very very stained aircraft now in these areas here where it's kind of you can see it's kind of a bit heavy I can come along with the cotton bud and just roll the cotton bud over it and it'll pick up the excess and the other thing you can do is dry the brush and, and do that that'll pick up the excess as well but I just want it to have a kind of here we go if I remove stuff from the brush you can see here I can pick it up and move it around okay like so and there we go all right you can see how that looks and then just to finish off i'll just do the end of this um stage two into the bottom of the pot to pick up the the dark stuff and i'm just going to brush it on here and remember this isn't weathering what i'm trying to do is add some effect just brush it on it's just all I'm trying to do is pick up the detail in the panel lines just so that it doesn't look so much like a toy he says with a great hole in the middle of the tank yeah doesn't look at all like a toy does it and then what I can do with my cotton bird I can go up and down like this and it'll just give it a kind of dry the cotton bud off Now you can see we've given it a kind of if you like a bit of a dirty look but it's we don't actually want the dirty look we want the just after some highlighting so I'm just going to rub a bit more away it just makes it look a bit less like a toy okay so there we go then guys, I'm going to get the, go on and get the rest of this done now and I'll be back with you for part 10 where we'll concentrate on the uh, on the white on all these parts here. Okay, so thanks for watching this. Um, please like and subscribe and also I've done something I said I wasn't going to do. I've actually started a Patreon channel, a Patreon account. So if you want to, um, if you feel you want to donate to the channel, I'd be eternally grateful. I just want to just I was, I was having a chat to a guy the other day and what I'd like to try and do is if I can is make the channel kind of pay for itself I'm not looking at making any money as you know I have no income I don't work so everything I buy is is out of my pocket but then it should be because I get to keep it but I don't know a lot of people have patreon um, accounts and and get donations I'm not after any regular donations if you just want to make just a couple of pound or whatever if a few people give a couple of pound I'll end up with enough to buy a new camera and then we'll get some better videos then I want to get some better lighting too and we've got this one but perhaps another one coming in from the side and you know 
I don't expect to ever be as good as Phil Flory, but I want to get a bit closer than I am now. So, um, thanks for watching, guys. Please like, subscribe, and like I say, if you want to make a little donation, feel free. If you don't, don't worry about it. I'm never going to be um, sort of making videos that are only available to Patreon people or whatever. I don't, I don't really want to go down that road. I don't think. We'll see. But uh, yeah, there you go. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all soon. Happy modelling. Bye bye.